So this will be a discussion of number five from the 2023 AP Calc AB exam. Numerically based problem here, they present us with this table of values. So we've got various values for f of x, f prime of x, g of x, and g prime of x. They tell us f and g are twice differentiable. We know what the table is showing us. Let h be the function defined by f of x, excuse me, f of g of x. Find h prime of 7 show the work that leads to your answer. So if you're going to find h prime of 7, you need to start with h prime of x. Taking h prime of x is going to require a chain rule. So I'll do the derivative of the outside function f, inner function copied into that, and then times the derivative of that inside function g. I then need to evaluate that at 7. So I'm just placing 7 in place of my x's. I need to know what g prime of 7 is. I can get that from the table. g prime of 7 is 8. So I needed that value to replace this right here. Uh, I need to know what g of 7 is. Now notice the placement of this g of 7. This g of 7 is inside f prime. I don't ever need f prime of 7 within this part of the problem. That's one of the things I tend to see students make mistakes with from time to time. It doesn't say f prime of x. It says f prime of g of x, right? g of 7 is something I can get from the table. G of seven, if I go to this row right here, uh, G of seven is zero. So I've replaced G of seven with zero. And what I really need for F prime is I need its value at zero and F prime of zero is three halves. This right here will receive full credit on the non-calculator FRQ section of the AP exam. It's pretty simple to simplify, but if you make a silly mistake, which are the mistakes I make more so than any other, you're going to miss the point that you would have had if you simplify this incorrectly. Uh, but 12 should be your final answer for part A. Part B says we've got another differentiable function, k. They give us the first derivative of k, so you have to pay attention to the fact that you're starting with k prime already. They ask, is the graph of k concave up or concave down at the point x equals 4? Give a reason for your answer. Well, concavity is going to have to do with the second derivative. If I start with k prime, I'm going to have to just do one more derivative to access k double prime. Now, when I do the derivative of this, you do have to make sure you choose the appropriate strategy. The overall formation of this is a product, right? It's, it's this piece that's a little ugly times this piece that's a little nicer. So I'm, I'm working within a product rule. So what you see is you see my addition, two things after the addition. They see quite a bit before the addition. Uh, and the reason for that is because before the addition, we have a chain situation, outer function, something squared, inner function, f of x. So when I do the derivative of the outer function, multiply by 2, subtract 1 from the exponent. So 2 something to the first, the something stays the same inner function, which was f of x, times the derivative of the inner function. What you see right here is the derivative of the first piece of the product times the original second piece plus the original first piece times the derivative of the second piece. I need to know whether I'm concave up or concave down at four. So I've got to toss four in place of all of my X's. A lot of X's to do that for, right? So one, two, three, four, five X's have been replaced with four. And we've just got to grab a bunch of things from out of the table. So F of four, I'm going, so I guess I'm using this column, right? And I'm, I'm really going to need all of those at some point within this calculation. Uh, F of four, so that is four f prime of 4, that is positive 3, uh, and then g of 4, that's the negative 3, plus f of 4 squared, so that's a 4 squared, and then g prime of 4, well g prime of 4 is this 2 right here. Now, if it just asked for the second derivative's value at 4, this would receive full credit, but in this particular situation, we need to be able to definitively say whether or not this calculation is positive or negative because the sign of this calculation is what indicates the concavity of the graph of k at the x of 4. So if you carefully simplify this, what you should end up determining is that k is k pr double prime of 4 is negative 40. And since k double prime of 4 is negative, the graph of k is concave down at the x value of 4. Next part of this defines yet another function, m of x. So m of x is defined as something pretty straightforward plus an integral dependent on f prime. Notice the placement of the variable x within that integral. 
uh, we have a holding variable t defining the variable within the integral itself, but the upper limit of integration is really where our input variable lies. Find m of 2, show the work that leads to your answer. So I typically see students have the tendency to automatically assume when they see an integral presented this way that they're going to have to use the, the fundamental theorem of calculus to take its derivative. And usually that is what you do within a problem like this. And you'll see in part D, we're going to have to do that. But in part C, there is nothing about a derivative right here. This is M of 2. To find M of 2, you are just putting 2 in place of the X's. And there are two of them, the one that we've already got highlighted up here and the one that's out in front of the integral. We're putting 2 in place of those X's. And now we need to evaluate this expression. So how would you evaluate this integral right here? Well, using the fundamental theorem of calculus, you'd find the antiderivative of f prime. And the antiderivative of f prime takes you back to f. You would have to toss in the upper limit, the lower limit, and take a difference. So that would give you f of 2 minus f of 0. So once again, you're going to the table. f of 2 is 7. So you see I've tossed that here. f of 0 is 10 so i've placed that here i'm taking the difference of those that difference is negative three uh if you use this this line right here would receive full credit so as i've said once or twice already within this video a numerical answer doesn't have to be fully simplified so you do waste a little bit of time you do take on a little bit of risk to, to get it to look like this the scoring guidelines are going to show this is the answer but this line that i have highlighted back here is definitely going to receive full credit this line will not your answer can't depend on f or f prime in this case two different instances of f evaluated at different spots you have to make sure you show that you know what f of two is and what f of zero is so this line's okay uh this line's okay this line's okay this line's not Part D says, all right, that same function M from part C, is it increasing, decreasing, or neither at x equals 2? Justify your answer. So here's where the derivative comes in. So the derivative of that 5x cubed is just a standard power rule, so that should be pretty straightforward. I'm going to add on the derivative of this component, and that's where F, the fundamental theorem of calculus is going to come in. So via FTC, doing the derivative of this type of definite integral when the upper limit of integration contains the variable that I'm differentiating with respect to. Those processes, the integral and the derivative, are going to undo each other, leaving me with, well, let me pause the video. I didn't do my derivative right. We'll talk again soon. Sorry about that. So I'm glad I clicked back as I was recording the video here to part C, because when I put this screen together prior to recording, I did not click back. I assumed that I remembered what this was from memory. When I do the derivative of this, the function within the integral is what comes out of it. And the function within the integral is not f of x, which is what I had in my work for part D initially. It's f prime of x. So that should be adjusted now. I, I did all the adjustments in red. Uh, so when I evaluate at 2, I end up needing this value. You might have seen previously I had used this value. I used f of 2 rather than f prime of 2. Um, that gives me a different numerical value. I do need to know the sign of this value. So it, it ends up being positive here, just as it was. I think I originally had that as a 67. Uh, so my conclusion is still OK. since the derivative of m at 2 is positive, m of x is increasing at x equals 2. So look back at the prior part of the problem if a later part depends on it. Don't do what I did, which is assume you remember what it said from memory. That is it for number 5.